Ricky Rudd was born in Chesapeake, Virginia. He began racing in his teenage years, racing both motocross and go-karting. Rudd did not start his stock car racing career until he was 18 years old, running the number 10 Ford, driving for his family friend Bill Champion. His first race, he qualified 26th, then finished 11th place, a whopping 46 laps down. Then he ran three additional races for Bill Champion, with his best finish coming at Bristol, 10th. In 1976, Rudd drove an additional four races for his father, again finishing 10th, this time at Daytona in the Firecracker 400, driving his father's number 22. For 1977, Rudd made the decision to drive full-time in the Cup Series, driving the number 22 owned by his father. They scored 10 top 10 finishes and was named Rookie of the Year in 1977. Rudd ran a part-time schedule in 1978. Even though he did not run the full schedule, he scored another 4 top 10 finishes and he also ended up finishing 34th in points. For 1979, Rudd moved over to the Judy Dunleavy No. 90 Trucksmore Ford. Full-time. He scored four top five finishes and finished ninth in point standings. At the conclusion of the season, Rudd left the team. And then in 1980, Rudd ran a part-time schedule for his dad in D.K. Ulrich. He would end the season driving the number seven Sandio car owned by Nelson Malenko. He ended up scoring one top ten finish. The following season, in 1981, Rudd drove the Diegard Race Diegard Motorsports number 88 car. Ricky was not quite able to find victory lane, but he did score his first five pole positions. Along came 1982, and along came a brand new team for Ricky. The number three, Piedmont Pontiac, owned by Rich Richard Childress. Ricky was able to score six top fives, but only could finish ninth in points. The next season, in 1983, he was able to score his first two Cup Series wins at Martinsville and Riverside, but again, he was only able to finish ninth in final Cup Series point standings. Then, now, Ricky also ran the only three Bush Series races of his career, winning in, the, in his debut at Dover. Then, in 1984, more or less, Dale Earnhardt and Ricky Rudd switched rides, Rudd going to Bud Moore's number 15, and Earnhardt going to the Childress number 3. Ricky suffered a horrifying crash at Daytona in the spring, leaving him with a concussion, a uh, torn cartilage in his ribcage, and his eyes were so swollen that they actually had to tape, he actually had to tape them open to see while driving in the Daytona 500 a week later. Rudd won his first race with Moore one week later in Richmond. His best start was first, four times, in the spring at Bristol, North Wicksboro, and Dover, then Nashville Fairgrounds in the summer. His best finish was first in the spring at Richmond. Overall, they scored four poles, one win, seven top fives, and 16 top tens, ending the 1984 season seventh in final points standings. So, for the 1985 season, Rudd stayed behind the wheel of the Bud Moore number 15, Motocraft Ford. The team had yet another competitive season. Rudd's best start was second in the fall at North Wilkesboro. His best finish was first in the season finale in Atlanta. Overall, they scored zero poles, one win, 13 top fives, and 19 top tens, finishing the 85 season sixth in final point standings. The following season in 86, Rudd again returned to the number 15 Motocraft Ford, and yet again a very competitive season for Rudd and the team. His best start was first in the spring at Dover, and his best finish was first twice in the, in the spring at Martinsville and in the fall at Dover. Now, overall they scored one pole, two wins, 11 top fives, and 17 top tens, finishing an impressive fifth in final point standings. For 1987, Rudd ran one more season for Bud Moore in that number 15 Motocraft Ford. His best start was second in the fall in Riverside, 
and his best finish was first, twice, in the spring in Atlanta and in the fall in Dover. Overall, they scored zero poles, two wins, 10 top fives, and 13 top 10 finishes, finishing sixth in final point standings. At the conclusion of the season, Rudd left the team for King Racing's number 26 Quaker State Buick. In 1988, Rudd's new team ran into a ton of engine issues. So many, Rudd finished outside the top 10 in points for the first time since 1981. His best start was first twice in the spring in Martinsville and Riverside. His best finish was first in the inaugural race at Sonoma. Overall, they scored two poles, one win, six top fives, and 11 top 10 finishes, finishing 11th in final points. The following season, Ricky was again back with King Racing in that number 26 Quaker State Buick. His best start was fourth at Sonoma, and his best finish was first also at Sonoma. Overall, he scored zero poles, one win, seven top fives, and 15 top ten finishes, finishing the 1989 season, along with his run with King Racing, eighth in final points. The 1990 season brought Rudd to the number five, lead by Garrett Chevrolet, owned by Hendrick Motorsports, replacing Jeff Bodine. Hendrick and Rudd had a successful season, successful first season together. Rudd's best start was first, twice in the spring at Richmond and Sonoma and his best finish was first in the summer at Watkins Glen. Overall, they scored two poles, one win, eight top fives, and 15 top tens, ending the 1990 Cup Series season seventh position of final points. Now, in 1991, the team changed primary sponsors over to Tide. So Ricky Rudd, Ricky was back behind the wheel of the, num- of the HMS number 5 Tide Chevrolet. His best start was first in the spring at Sonoma. And his best finish was first in the spring at Darlington. Overall, they scored one pole, one win, nine top fives, and 17 top tens. Rudd and the number five team was fast and consistent all season, coming up short of a championship, just short, finishing second to Dale Earnhardt. In 1992, Ricky remained behind the wheel of the HMS number five, Tide Chevrolet. This season, the team still had pace, and put up very solid statistics, but just points-wise, wasn't as great as the previous season. Rudd's best start was first in the spring at Sonoma, and his best finish was first in the fall at Dover. Overall, they scored one pole, one win, nine top fives, and 18 top tens, finishing the season seventh in final points. The following season in 1993, Rudd was again behind the wheel of the Hendrick Motorsports number 5 Tide Chevrolet. At times, the team looked solid, but overall, they definitely had a down season. Rudd's best start was second three times in the spring at Sonoma and Michigan, and then in the fall at North Wilkesboro. His best finish was first in the spring at Michigan. Throughout the 1993 season, they scored zero poles, one win, nine top fives, and 14 top tens, finishing his run with Hendrick Motorsports in the 1993 Cup Series season, 10th and final points. Ricky Rudd left the team at the conclusion of the season to form his own team, Rudd Performance Motorsports. Ricky Rudd took the Tide sponsorship with him when he left Eric Motorsports, becoming the number 10 Tide Ford. The team was fantastic for a first-year team, spending the entire season in the top 10 in points. Rudd's best start was first in the fall in Rockingham, his best finish was first in the summer at Loudoun. The team overall in their first season scored one pole, one win, six top fives, and 15 top tens, en route to a surprising and impressive fifth place points finish. The next season in 1995, Rudd and the team had an even better season statistically than in 94, but consistency, consistency wasn't on their side as much this season while being hampered by six DNFs. His best start was first twice, in the spring at Sonoma and in the fall at Charlotte. His best finish was first in the fall at Phoenix. Overall, they scored two poles, one win, ten top five finishes, and sixteen top tens, finishing the 1995 season ninth position in final points. The following season in 1996, Rudd and RPM 
remain competitive and consistent. Ricky's best start was second twice in the spring at Sonoma and at the fall race at Rockingham. His best finish was first in the fall at Rockingham. Overall, they scored zero poles, one win, five top fives, and 16 top tens, finishing the 1996 season sixth in the Final Cup Series points. The next season in 1997, Rudd and the team started to slip a little bit. His best start was fifth twice in the spring at Martinsville and in the fall at Martinsville again. His best finish was first twice in the spring at Dover and in the summer at Indy. Yes, the team did, in fact, win the 1997 running of the Brickyard 400. Overall, they scored zero poles, two wins, six top fives, and 11 top tens. The team was right on target to finish 8th to 10th in points until DNFing three out of the final five races of the season, plummeting them to 17th in final Cup Series point standings. Then in 1998, the team continued to its fall from grace. The multi-team operations really, really started to take a foothold in the sport. Red single car operation was really starting to fall behind the bigger teams. One bright spot was in the fall at Martinsville, where even a faulty, faulty cooling system and very hot temperatures couldn't stop Rudd from scoring his final victory as an owner-driver. His best start was second in the fall at Martinsville also. Overall, they scored zero poles, one win, one top five, and five top ten finishes, ending the 1998 season a disappointing 22nd in final points. The following season, 1999, Red Performance Motorsports went through three different crew chiefs and ended the season again very disappointed. Rudd's best start was first in the spring at Rockingham. His best finish was third twice in the fall at Bristol and Talladega. This was the first season since 1982, 16 years, that he was not able to find victory lane. Overall, they scored one pole, zero wins, three top fives, and five top tens. Into the 1999 season, 31st in final points. At the conclusion of the season, Tide left the team to move over to the startup number 32 Cowell's team. Rudd, without a sponsor, chose to liquidate his equipment and just go back to driving for a car owner. The year 2000 brought a brand new start for Ricky Rudd's racing career as he took over the number 28 Haviland Ford for Robert Yates Racing. Rudd wasn't able to win when a race in 2000, but rebounded in every other way, finishing 26 positions better in points than he did the previous season. His best start was first twice in the spring at Las Vegas and in the summer in Indy. His best finish was second in the summer in Michigan. Rudd's overall performance for the 2000 Cup Series season was two poles, zero wins, 12 top fives, and 19 top tens ending the season an impressive fifth and final points. In 2001, Rudd's awesome return to form continued. After three seasons away from Ricky Lane, he even returned to Victory Lane. His best start was first in the spring at Pocono. His best finish was first twice in the spring at Pocono and in the fall at Richmond. The team spent about three-fourths of the season in the top five in points. Overall, they scored one pole, two wins, 14 top fives, and 22 top top tens, finishing the 01 season fourth in final points. Rudd had such a successful season, he tied the most top ten finishes he had ever scored in a single season, 14. Then came 2002. The bloom started coming off the road, so to speak. After the fall race at Richmond, Rudd and Robert Yates Racing engine specialist Larry Lackey got into a heated argument on pit road. Lackey punched Rudd in the face, and Rudd hit Lackey with a water bottle, resulting in Rudd being fined $5,000 and being placed on probation. Lackey was fined $10,000 and resigned from Robert Yates Racing. This would be Rudd's final season behind the wheel of the number 28 Haviland Ford. His best finish was first in the summer at Watkins Glen. His best start. His best finish was first in the summer at Sonoma. This would be this victory at Sonoma would be would end up being his final of 23 Cup Series victories in his career. Overall, they scored one pole, one win, eight top fives, and 12 top tens, ending the 2002 season along with his run 
with Robert Yates racing 10th and final point. The next season, more or less, Elliot Sadler and Ricky Rudd swapped rides. With Rudd taking over the seat that had been filled by Sadler in the number 21 Motocraft Ford for Wood Brothers Racing. His best start was 5th in the Daytona 500, and his best finish was 2nd in the fall at Loudoun. Overall, they scored 0 poles, 0 wins, 4 top 5s, and 5 top 10s, finishing the 2003 season 23rd in final points. In 2004, Rudd and the team had another pretty blah kind of season. Rudd was able to score his final pole position at Talladega in the spring. His best finish was second in the fall at Kansas, where he finished side-by-side side with Joe Nemechek. Overall, they scored one pole, zero wins, one top five, and three top tens, finishing a disappointing 24th in final points. The following season, Rudd and the Wood Brothers racing team actually had a very solid season by the team's standards at the time. Rudd's best start was second in the fall at Martinsville. His best finish was second in the summer at Sonoma. Overall, they scored zero poles, zero wins, two top fives, and nine top ten finishes. Ending the 2005 season and his run with Wood, Brother, Wood Brothers Racing, and at the time what we all thought was possibly his career in the 21st position of final points. He announced that he would be taking a break from racing at the end of the 05 season. For 2006, he only filled in for Tony Stewart at Dover when he was ailing from an injury. In 2007, Rudd made his return to the Cup Series for one last season, driving the number 88 Snickers Ford full-time for Gates Racing. He did not get to run all 36 races that season, missing five races due to injury. His best start was second in the Daytona 500, and his best finish was seventh in the spring at Charlotte. Overall, they only scored that single top 10 finish at Charlotte. Rudd ended the 2007 season and his second run with the eight, and his racing career for that matter, 33rd in final points. So, Rudd, after 906 Cup Series starts, 29 poles, 23 victories, and 374 top 10 finishes. There's no doubt how Ricky Rudd was one of the NASCAR's almost champions. Thanks for watching, and take care.